and this is the presentation. Mexico is rich in cultural and biological diversity, which is now known as a biocultural diversity. Mexico is one of the five countries in the world that has these two many cultures, about 16, and the many ecosystems in the world. All together are known as biocultural diversity. For many indigenous people and peace and societies, with hunting and gathering traditions, this biodiversity is essential for a balanced diet. But it is a quantity of the species available that is the key to dietary electricity. It is important to notice that Mexican peasants are not only farmers. Nowadays, they do a lot of activities to complement their income, like gathering, hunting, fishing, crafting, migration, professional activities. And the household do all these works and bring to the home all the money they can get. 7% of Mexican agricultural lands are under temporary agricultural crops. Small farmers accounting 85% of total maize production in small scale. For Mexicans, maize is not just a crop, but a deep cultural symbol intrinsic to daily life. The tortillas you ate yesterday, there is this only one dish. There are many, many dishes from maize. Maize is the basis of the Mexican diet. Diversity of maize races from the national territory. There are about 16 different races of maize, uh, um, which are in accordance with different levels, from sea level to 3,000 meters from the level sea. And the Indian communities are the people who grow this uh, mostly this uh, <coughs> maize. The meal, but we cannot talk about uh, the corn isolated. Milpa is a field which farmers plant a lot of crops at once. Milpa crops are nutritionally and environmentally complementary. Milpa generates private economy value in terms of food security, diet quality, and life foods for about 2 million of farms, farm households. The Milpa is this place where the peasant uh, grows maize and many other products. The Milpa Lacandon in Chiapas, the Lacandon is an Indian group in Chiapas, there are about 15 different products associated with the maize. In the Milpa Chinenteca is in Oaxaca, 13 different products. And the Milpa Nahua, where are we working now, we have count 32 different products. Of course, this is in the tropical rainforest, but in the most, more dry places, it includes only maize, squash, hot pepper, and beans. The Raranguris, Raranguris are in the north of Mexico, it's a big state in the Sierra, in the high Sierra. We worked there and we found two different original land races and 11 associated crops. Mushroom and Kelites, it will greens, are 25 mostly in the rainy seasons. In the backyard crops, they have fruits, medicine plants, and different kinds of vegetables. The wildlife, they eat 15 different species, from deer to lizards. Everything that moves is good to them. Fishes, they have no sea, but they are uh, rivers and small rivers. Different, five different kinds of fishes and three different kinds of insects. This all, and they have a lot of uh, ways to um, protect the food. They dry. They put it in salt, they uh, cook in different and many ways. As I see, there are more than 600 species made of maize. Atolles, which is this is atole, elotes, tortillas, tamales, these are the tamales, there are many, many kinds of tamales, snacks, bakery, and greens. <laughs> this is the scientific part of it. <laughs> 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 
Okay, as I read in last talk, we don't eat just maize. We combine it with different products, and all these products are produced in the Milpa. For, uh, for example, <coughs> you have seen all these days that we combine maize with beans. And with this combination, we have a very high quality protein. But besides, besides beans, we have other products. One of them that maybe you know is the amaranth. This was used for the Aztecs 100 years ago, and it was mixed also with maize, and it has a high level of lysine and tryptophan. And I read <coughs> this morning talk about kelites. Kelites are very important in the rural areas, Maybe with the indigenous people where they are eating only products of the meat. Why they are important? Because they are an excellent source of micronutrients. Carotenoids, pro, vitamin A, A, iron, zinc, vitamin B12, phosphorus, folate, and iodine. This means that when we combine all these products, we will have a very good diet, as this can Ricardo talk about the Taraumaras. In one year, the Taraumaras ate more than 100 different species. What is the problem? When they have money, they use this money to buy processed food, and then we have the problems that Julian was talking about. Third, I won't talk anything about this tamalization. I want, I just will show you these pictures. This is how the Tarao Maras do this tamalization. And they use the Najayote as feeding for pigs. This is important. And now I will talk about a traditional food product that it is <coughs> called pinole. Pinole has been consumed for Mexicans for thousands of years. But nowadays, you cannot find it in the cities. And if you go to the rural areas, you won't find it. It is now very expensive. It is something special. And it is homemade. What is pinole? <coughs> I want to show you the traditional process. Do the, the main strain is roasted. After it is roasted, this is the key point of the process. It is milk, either by hand, in the metate, or using this meal. This, this meal is very similar to that that we saw yesterday. It has the two dicks that are turning in this way. But these are not made of the stone, these are made of iron. Then we were working with the Huicholes. The Huicholes are indigenous people that live in the Nayarit, in the mountains. And we have a meeting with all the community where they, when we present the project to us, if they agree that we are working with them, they say yes. And because Pinole is produced by women, they say, now you go away with all the women and you are talking to them and you decide how to how you will work. Ricardo was there and they say to him, now you may not be there. You can take pictures but you have to be far away from the women. Then this was something great, I remember it very well, because they gave me a class of process engineering. The women showed me how to produce pinole, what was the city, what, I, what they have to do. I went to the kitchen with them, they teach me, they told me how to make pinole. And after we designed together the facility. I asked them, what do you want? They say, we don't want a machine that is roasting the seed because we do it in our home after we finish cooking. But we are tired of feeling the Maize, then we need a ah, meal. But in this community, they don't have electricity, they don't have gas, solar, gas, they don't have anything. Then we decide to use solar energy. 
and this is a special mill with a very high efficiency. So we can use the solar cells here. They are testing the machines, and I will tell you that they were very really surprised because they wanted a very big machine, and this is a small one, and they didn't believe it was working. Only one of these women brought about 20 kilos of roasted maize, and after they see that in less than five minutes it was milk, all they went to their house and bring the maize to the milk. This is the inauguration of the plant and all the community went, even the dogs. This is the special dress for the parties. And the product is called naikame. Naikame means the, the maize board, how he makes his board in, in the language. And they design all these things, they design these pictures and they painted this building. This building was given to the women for the community. After we were working with the Yankees, you will visit this small facility. The Yankees have electricity, they are close to the road, and they want to have a machine to grow the maize. This is the machine, the milling. There are different kinds of pinole. You have one with cinnamon and sugar, another with the leaves. And something very interesting is that after they decide to use the same equipment for other products. This is one of the products that I will show you. This is a mermaid of Itahaya. This is the analysis. This, is, this was done by certified laboratories. You can see the crude protein was about 11%, fat 5%, carbohydrate 64%. From this, sugar was only 1%. Any fiber was about 12%. Why, why, why pinol is important? Maybe you have listened about the taromaras. The taromaras live in Chihuahua. They are running all the day. They always are the winners in the marathons. And what they eat? Just all the pinot. They left the home at every morning for two or three days or more, and they go <coughs> to, the, to the mountain with just a small bag of pinot. And I learned when I was studying about the, the, story, the history of Sonora that the cowboys in the ancient times do the same. Then pinole was very important, but now we are eating pinole because we change pinole by corn fries and all these things. This other result has been important. It is safe, this product, you can see the quantity of colonies of aerobic bacteria. They are really very low, 10 times lower than the norm. Point falls we don't find. These rolls, it doesn't have pesticides, organochloride, or organophosphorate. It doesn't have aflatoxins, they were not detected. And the heavy, heavy metals are below. You know. And this is a product with excellent quality, producing a small Indian community. This means we can have good manufacturing practice. But I told you they are producing other products. They have the pinole from maize, but also from wheat. And this could be important for, important for our study. This process is different from this one. They are producing it also from pechita. Pechita came from this tree. You will, I will show you the tree yes, more, tomorrow or after tomorrow. They also produce maize flour. The pita haya, here you have the pita haya. Pita haya is the fruit of this cactus. We learned together with them how to get it. And this is the product. We don't know about the nutrition properties of this. Maybe <coughs> that it will be very interesting.
because of the color. And I can tell you that this is this doesn't have anything, only the Buddha higher, and the shelf life is two or more years. It doesn't have sugar, it doesn't have pectin, it doesn't have anything for conservation. What will be the future? Pinole was originally produced from this maize that is called chapalote. Chapalote is one of the five most ancient original, original plant races in Mesoamerica. So this is important. The origin was Sonora and Sinaloa. But nowadays, they are very, very few accessions. It means it is almost extinct. Why? Maybe because the productivity <coughs> is so high. What are the nutritional properties of this place? We don't know. Can we want to recover it for producing pinole? Of course, now the pinole and only products are sold across <coughs> the Yaki Why we didn't go to another market? because the Yaki women didn't want to go. They said first, we want to know how to produce, we want to feel very sure, we don't want to pay tax. And after some time, when we decide that, it is, that we are ready, we will pay tax, we will have the company, and we will export it to the States and other countries. What we have left? Biotechnology applied to communities and micro regions in rural areas generates endogenous products for the sustainable use of agrobiodiversity. The products are for on farm consumption and in market opportunities. When we talk about food security and better nutrition for the rural areas, we are talking about recovering, dignifying, and promoting the economical and nutritive advantage of the traditional foods, making healthy, nutritious, and culturally appropriate food accessible and affordable, supporting local, regional, family scale, and sustainable food production, building and revitalizing local communities and economies, providing fair ways and decent working conditions for farmers and food system workers, and portable the best people to work together to create positive change in the food system and their communities. We have to work with the people, we have to work with the traditional foods that we shouldn't forget the culture. And when we are working with indigenous people or with farmers in the rural areas, what we are doing, we combine the traditional knowledge that they have with the formal scientific knowledge and we have a very big potential when we combine these two knowledge. Here, this is a milpa that we visit one week ago. This is in the top of the mountains, I don't know, 2,500 meters over the sea level, isolate of everything, and you can see. Here, they have the 32, 31 products associated with maize, and they practice from the ancient times conserve, agriculture conservation. Agricultural conservation. Well, how is it? Conservation agriculture. You can see here. So this is very important. <coughs> um, see those minutes. So and for to finish this, uh, I will, I would like to uh, try to explain what I tried to say yesterday. This is uh, what you hear until now is uh, um, we are trying to combine traditional knowledge to scientific uh, research, but what many scientists, hard scientists, doesn't consider <coughs> is this that we anthropologists must consider. What about the richness of biocultural diversity in Mexico? It was the beginning of the presentation. We have to deal with neoliberal policies, internal and external, international and national, 
We have to deal with corruption. Mexico is the 14th place in corruption in all the world. We have to deal with 30 years of abandoned small producer due to green revolution, among other things. We have to deal with increasing imports of staple food instead due to the neoliberal policies. We have to deal with promoting migration as a solution. For many years, the migration for Mexico was a solution. You have war in the United States, but now, with the Trump factor, there are no more migration. But three millions of Mexican citizens are coming back. We have to deal with economy based on oil, but Mexico has no oil. We have to deal with what I said yesterday, racism and discrimination. We have been dealing with this for 500 years. I mean, you say, see, if you ask to uh, indigenous people what do you eat, they believe that if they eat the white people food, they would be better than if, 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 they, if they say, we eat the Indian and the lizards and the, and the fishes and the insects. We deal with transnational companies promoting junk food. And you can see it in the television, in the radio, everywhere. So the cost of bad nutrition are clear. Indeed, the problem is how to deal with each one of them and with all this together. The research can be one, and how to solve problems using the research, scientific research and consider all these which are social, cultural, historical factors that most of the time doesn't let you solve problems. Thank you. the fact that you involve women in working together and you were talking about empowering people, no? I'm assuming that the fact that you involve them in the factories change a little bit the household dynamic, uh, the relation between women and men. So I would like to know because in some cases that has a positive effect, but there is also documentation of, of involving women in these kind of projects and burning them on time and kind of starting having more problems with your partners. The, with the initial, the initial women were really very clever. The reason because they didn't want to rob the place in the facility was because they want to stay, to, to stay more time at home. And then they use the free time for women Anyways. With the Yaquis, it was very funny because all the Yaquis have a profession. They are engineers, they are lawyers, they are mathematicians, but they cannot get a job. Why? Because there are not a lot of jobs in Sonora for professional people and because they are idiots. But when they start working, they were really afraid. They couldn't do anything. If some, something was wrong in one machine, they couldn't do anything. But we were very lucky because we find a mechanic, a woman judge. That she helps, she fixes everything. She's mathematician. It is great. And now they are working. Someday I asked them, they keep <coughs> They don't work all day. They don't work when they have a special parties at the town. And this is the reason because they say, don't say to us that we have to have a company, that we have to have a, a special organization. We will organize ourselves as we want, and we will work as we want. We want to export to the states, but let that, let's do it later. We want first to cover our the necessities of our own people. They are doing it very well. Last time that we asked her, I asked, and is this really working? And the answer was, how do you think that we keep our home, that we keep our children in the school? With this facility, we are paying all the, all the things that we need. And when we are talking about poor people, 
I always say to the economists that we have some problems <coughs> because we said all poor people <coughs> are who doesn't get more than two dollars per day. But for example, with the Taramaura, Taramaras, they don't need money because they don't want to chop the food. They produce everything that they need. And if they have more food, they exchange this with the other people around them. Then if you say, oh, you are poor because you, you don't get two dollars per day, they don't need this. They satisfy their necessities in another way. Then when you go, I have been going to the indigenous to the East Villas for five or six years. Before I went there, I didn't have any idea how it was working. I didn't have any idea why a lot of scientists in Mexico don't agree that we have genetic modified maize in Mexico. Now I learned how important this is. I learned how many varieties they have. I learned that every kind of maize is for something special. And if it is for some special dish, it must have some properties, physical properties, physicochemical properties, nutritional properties, I don't know. But I, I just want to tell you that going to the field, working with these people changed my mind completely. Okay. Let, me, let me say something quickly. About empowering, empowering these people. Well, uh, these three women are Yaquis, are the Yaquis, are the group for empowering the, the, this, this female. We uh, ask them to keep a, a, a team. This woman is a mathematician from the Universidad de Sonora. This, which is the leader, he is a lawyer. He has specialized special, in the, the rights of the Indian people. And this is professor, she is professor. She is a leader of the Yaqui communities and is defending the territory. And is against big project for the government. They want to build a um, gasoducto, which is crossing the territory. Well, she became empowered with this project and with her background. She was kidnapped one month ago with her husband. They quickly communicated with us, all the <coughs> networks, the social networks, we were sending messages. She was uh, left uh, at night, that, that day, at the night, but his husband was kidnapped for five years. Everyone thought he was dead. He appeared tortured, but alive. Now they are asking for political asylum in Brazil or in other countries. That's a problem when you try to empower a, a small group of Indians, which they believe they are empowered, and they began to lead a movement defending the territory, and this is the result. Maybe you are, you are going to know Arabella, or maybe she is uh, in another country, asylum for political reasons. <coughs> that is a problem with the scientific research, and when you try to apply this to the field, to the communities, to empower a small group, these political things can fracasar uh,